Hello, Blood Bowl players. Welcome back. We're on episode seven, I think now. Um, and we're looking at how to throw teammates, which is basically where a big guy like this will throw one of the little guys, or as we like to call them, stunty players, across the pitch. Um, there's whole reasons as to why you might want to do this. You might be trying to score really quickly. You might simply just want to be throwing your players at opposition players as projectiles. And there's a whole different host of different reasons as to why. So we're going to have a little look into how you do it now. So let's get started. See you on the pitch. All right, then, peoples. Um, so throwing a, another player requires two things. So to start off, the player who uh, is throwing a sort of teammate needs to have the throw teammate special ability and it's effectively a trait they call it now um and only big guys have that skill so things like trolls ogres uh treemen things like that and they're normally part of a team that's mainly focused on stunty players so a goblin team halfling team snotling team you name it it'll have some kind of player that can throw them and then on the receiving end of that a player that can be thrown has to have the right stuff trait slash skill, what do you want to call it? And right stuff basically means that they can be thrown by a throw teammate, a big guy. You cannot pick up an opposition player um, and throw them, as hilarious as that would be. You cannot do that. So if it was a sort of stunty on stunty game, you couldn't pick up your opponent's halfling and lob them off the pitch. Sadly, but yeah, you cannot do that. So you can only throw your own players <laughs> and, of course, likely hurt your own players in the process. So throwing teammates are is, is probably one of the silliest and most fun parts of the game. And you need those two parts to do it. The elf team, in our example, we've been watching, do not have any option to do that. So specific teams are what you're going to look for if you want to achieve this. So... A throw teammate action effectively replaces the pass action for your turn. So instead of passing the ball like we detailed in the last video, instead you're going to throw one of your own players. And in some regards, the way the whole process pans out is similar, but slightly different. So just like previously, your positional, you're going to want to declare a throw teammate and no one else in your team can then, of course, do that yeah, pass or throw teammate skill. So in this situation, our troll will activate. And like a lot of big guys, they have a nega trait. Um, in this situation, for our troll to throw this goblin next to him, he actually needs to roll a really stupid roll. And I think we'll go into detail into what big guys do and what they are in another later episode. But for now... We're just going to assume it's a two plus and we won't explain why. So this guy effectively needs to roll a two plus to do anything. But in, even when it comes to throw teammate. So we've passed that, which means that he's actually now able to pass a player. So it can be, they have to be adjacent to a right stuff player and they don't have to start their move next to them. So this troll could have been over here, for example, and you might want to throw this goblin here. We rolled a four, he can then move his movement and he might decide to finish here. He's then adjacent to this goblin and he'll be able to throw him. Of course, just like a pass, no matter what happens now, the moment that the throw roll is made, this player's activation is effectively over. So he can't throw the goblin and then continue to move. Just like a pass of passing the ball, his activation will end. So before we get into passing or well, the, the dice rolls required to throw these little guys, let's have a little look at the range ruler. So you may have become accustomed to, to this in the last episode. We had our four different range bands. However, for throw teammate, effectively the ruler is halved. So because it's a little bit more difficult to chuck one of your mates, you only actually use half of the ruler to throw teammates. Now, it's called different things. You can keep the name the same if you prefer, but in, in terms of the rules, this zone here 
is called a quick throw and this zone here is called a short throw. And just like in the previous episode, you can decide your square by, you know, moving this around and you can of course pre-measure and you measure from the player throwing the stunty, not the stunty player. So you don't measure from this guy, you measure from the top of the player here. Now it's worth remembering that unlike a pass, a thrown stunty player cannot be deflected or intercepted, um, much to some people's gripes, but other big guys can't catch stunties out of the sky and throw them back. Effectively, once this the dice roll has been rolled, this little guy is either going to fumble where he was or he's going to end up somewhere over here. But that's by the by for now. Now, you can, of course, reference this little template here, a little bit like the uh, passing uh, page previous. This shows you the ranges that you can achieve. So, of course, the green is the quick throw. Yellow is the... Uh, short throw and you'll notice that you can only really throw six squares forward but that doesn't mean that's going to be the distance your stunty player goes so let's get into that now now unlike a pass action which can be accurate no throw teammate action can ever be accurate so they will always scatter using our deviation template here so you can almost imagine every single stunty being sort of an, an inaccurate pass. Um, but they call it four different things in the rules. You've got a superb throw, a successful throw, a terrible throw, and then a fumbled throw. So they're similar. They're a kind of mirror of the passing rules, but they're slightly different. And it's a little bit more difficult to get your stunty player where you would like them. So. Let's do a few examples. So a superb throw um, is where when you're rolling a dice against this player's passing stat, which for the troll is a five plus. So even before we start thinking about negatives uh, that can affect this dice roll, we're already looking at it being particularly difficult to get somebody thrown down the pitch. So a superb throw will only occur when your player rolls a direct six. So effectively, that's always a pass. So in that situation, we're going to assume we've made a superb throw and uh, we're just going to move it back a little bit just so we can get everything in shot. We're going to be trying to throw our uh, little stunty player six squares straight forward. So we're actually going to try and throw him to this square here. We're going to use a D16 to show it. We've rolled a six, and which is a superb throw. So we actually pick him off the ground, we place him here, and then we will roll three times on this template because we have to scatter him before he lands. You gotta imagine he's still high in the sky. He's gonna to go to the two. That was a seven, which is back to there, and then a one. So now he's going to land here, and he'll get a chance to land it, which we'll come to in a minute. So that would be a superb throw. Now, with, with a superb throw, there are benefits to the stunty player landing. So keep that in mind for later. Right. So a successful throw is effectively a dice roll that is, is doesn't quite meet the target roll of the, the five plus in this case, but kind of it's a four or three or something that isn't modified to a one. Effectively, the pass happens exactly the same. So even if you haven't rolled that five plus target that was required here for this guy, you still, you're still going to be throwing the ball, or sorry, sorry the, you're still going to be throwing the stunty player. And they're going to scatter three times and get a chance to land it. However, the difference here is that the landing will be a little bit more difficult. So when it comes to landing, keep that in mind, what the difference is between those two. Now, before we get to the next two, I think it's worth talking about modifiers. So it's worth noting that just like with the pass ruler previously for the passing episode, there are no modifiers for this zone, the uh, quick throw zone, but there is a modifier of minus one here to your dice roll. It's worth remembering that, that is minus one and then also worth considering that there are modifiers for every tackle zone that might be on your big guy. So in this situation, if we wanted to be passing our little, little goblin to this square again, 
we would actually need uh, will be five plus six plus six plus <laughs> six plus doesn't make sense right but effectively six is always succeed so it's not worth worrying about but there are a minus three modifier which will affect the next two options because if you are modified to one when you're rolling your dice so we had minus three here so if we rolled a four like we did previously or for like if we had done for a successful throw that would have been a successful throw in the last example but this would actually be modified by minus by three to a one and when things are modified to a one you kind of throw the stunty player as if it was a wildly inaccurate pass so in this case we'd rolled a four we had minus three on the dice roll making it a one and we would effectively then take our little uh scatter template and roll a d6 and a d8 to deviate and our poor little stunty player would actually be thrown two squares to the direction four instead. So from here, he would actually land there somewhere, which is hilarious fun. Now, it would still scatter three times before landing, of course. So again, you would roll this three times, which would be to the four, three, seven. That would be where he's about to land. And that's where you would then need to roll your uh, landing roll. And again, it gets even more difficult to land if it's a terrible throw. So worth remembering that you could end up throwing your little guys off the pitch, backwards, who knows. Um, so that's the third option. And then the fourth option is probably the uh, simplest. If you roll a direct one or an unmodified one straight on the dice roll like this, then effectively the player is fumbled. And just like fumbling a ball, you roll a D8. In this case, our goblin would have been picked up by the troll and actually dropped in this square where they would get a chance to land in this square here. So they don't just fall down, they actually do get a chance to land. However, that once you rolled that one, you, 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 you effectively can't try to throw again unless you wanna try and use a team reroll, of course. So that's the four different options that can happen. So it's also worth remembering that your stunty players can actually be carrying the ball when the uh, throw teammate occurs. If they are carrying the ball and they are thrown successfully but don't stick the landing, it is a turnover. So it's worth remembering that uh, it's a bit more risky if they're in possession, but at the same time, it can give you the opportunity to score extremely quickly, which is a great benefit to being a stunty player. So that's the how to throw with the big guys. Now, remembering the big guys have a lot of nega traits. There's a lot of additional rules for using them. So in this case, there's the uh, always hungry rule as well as the really stupid rules. There's a few extra dice to roll. Worth reading on your big guys and read all the rules thoroughly before you kind of use them. On top of the throw teammate, they probably are one of the more complicated positionals to have in your teams. So I guess we'll move on to how you land it. All right, guys, so we have just, as an example, thrown this goblin here, and we're actually gonna give him the ball because it makes it more dramatic. There you go. So our little goblin's been thrown. The uh, the, the troll in this case, he has finished his activation and we uh, have scattered this guy and he's actually landing here. Now to roll a landing roll, you actually need to consult how good your throw was. So in this case, we're gonna assume that we had rolled a superb uh, throw, which means that there are no modifiers on the landing. So to land, you need to roll an agility test. So it's a target roll for a goblin of three plus. You probably would have failed that one. I reckon you'd probably use a team reroll to see if you can land it, and he sticks it. So once he's sticked the landing, if he hasn't already been in this turn, so if he hasn't activated yet, then he can actually do something. Now he could shimmy off and potentially score, or you know, do a block or whatever he likes, really, if he fancies it. But if he had been, so for example, if he'd moved to the troll, 
and then the troll threw him, his activation would have already been finished this turn. And then next turn, when everybody turns around, then you'll be able to move him. But what you want to try and do, usually with throw teammates, especially if you're trying to score quickly, is to get the ball to this player who's next to the troll with a handoff or something similar that we kind of detailed or teased in the last video. And then, of course, this player's not been, which means that the troll can throw him and then he goes because you can still do a handoff and a throw teammate. It's only the pass activation that you, you lose when you're throwing a teammate. So the next type of landing would kind of be, I guess it's kind of a successful pass. It's not superb. If it's a successful pass, you still would have scattered around in the sky and it'd be try attempting to land in this square. However, there would be a minus one modifier. And for wildly inaccurate passes, I think they're called wildly inaccurate. Let me check. No, they're called terrible throws. It would be minus two. So for the varying degree of poor throw from your big guys actually affects the landing roll. Either they've been thrown too shallow or thrown too high, you decide. So actually this would then be actually be a four plus for this guy to land, which he would have stuck it on a successful throw. And then on a terrible throw, it would have been a five plus to stick it, which he actually would fail. And in that case, with the ball in his possession, he would go down in that square. The opponent would be able to make a armor roll and potentially injure this little guy. And the ball would bounce out to here. And that would be a turnover in this situation because the ball is now loose and it's hit the ground. However, however, they are only stunty players and they really aren't, you know, that important when it comes to the game. So if he wasn't in possession and we assume that this ball wasn't there and this had happened, it wouldn't be a turnover. And in fact, if your opponent fails to break your player's armour and they haven't been in this turn, he can actually get up and do a move, of course, with all the negatives to getting up, losing free movement, etc. Of course, if your player's stunned, their armor's broken and they're stunned, then afraid. He can't get up this turn. Even if they're knocked out, injured, no turnover. It's only when they're in possession of the ball and they fall down. That's the only time it's a turnover. So you can throw your goblins to your heart's content or snotlings if you've got enough and enough turns to do it if they've not got the ball. And we'll come to why that could be a bit of fun in a bit. But it's worth also remembering that uh, if he's fumbled, so let's take it back to here quickly. If our uh, troll had rolled a straight one, then he would actually fumble randomly from the, the troll square, which would be a three, which would be to there, and he would still have to stick the landing. So that's only a minus one to land. It's only terrible throws at a minus two. So he'd be landing it on a four. He would land it. And if he hadn't been, he'd then still be able to move. It's just a case that the troll's finished and he's able to go. And if he was in possession of the ball, you'd be pretty chappy, happy about that because otherwise it would have been a turnover back here. So that's sticking the landing. Uh, there are a few additional things to note. So let's say, for example, we were trying to land here. And there are a few little elves about. And our scatter, the D3 scatter that we have to do, took us to a square here, for example. And we're landing in between those two elves. When you're landing, you have to take into account the quality of the throw and you also need to take into account tackle zones so we're landing in a square there with two tackle zones and for each square is minus one to the dice roll so even if this had been superb this little guy would need uh threes normally so fours fives you would need five plus to, to land this dice roll which he would have failed he would have fallen over and that would be well, in this situation, he's not with the ball, so it wouldn't be a turnover. Apologies. So that would be a uh, just a, oh, well, he's all right. Who can go next kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, remembering modifiers is important. There's additionally something new you can do with this edition where you can actually throw right stuff players or stunty players that aren't standing and have no tackle zones. So <laughs> this troll could decide to throw his little friend here, but he's kind of thought, you know what? 
this player on here down here who's stunned. I fancy throwing him instead. So in this situation, he's going to roll to see if he can move. He can. He's going to run up to this guy. And then he's going to declare a throw. He's going to pick him up like normal. Do all the usual big guy stuff, which we're not going to show now. And then still throw him. Uh, just like normal, really. However, when a player's down or has no tackle zones, as it says, which in this case, he's on the floor, he doesn't. They actually don't get a chance to land. They just effectively land in your target square, wherever that may have been. They hit the deck, they bounce once. So he would uh, flop to that square instead and then you roll another armor roll and potentially another injury roll on that player. So you're not gonna be wanting to do this with players with the ball, of course. They're not gonna have the ball because they're on the ground. You're gonna be doing this with players when you've almost run out of, you know, things to throw effectively or you could throw like stun players you can't get up anyway you throw them up the pitch or as we're about to detail throw them like projectile missiles so you can throw players of course if he was still say prone in this situation and he hadn't been which you'd assume he hadn't been in this situation he'd actually still be able to get up and move um, but he can't stick the landing, of course. So it's worth remembering that it will hurt them. They don't get a chance to land and they do scatter. So that's a new part of the game, throwing prone players. A lot of fun. All right, guys. So last bit to think about when you are throwing your players. Often players will be thrown to score touchdowns or to, you know, get into a position where they blitz someone in the backfield of your opposition's half. However, it's also quite a favorable, favorable thing to do when you've got a lot of little guys, a lot of extra stunty players, especially like snotting teams and ogre teams, just to use them as projectiles, to be perfectly honest. Um, can't break down your opponent's cage. Why not throw a goblin at it? So in this situation, we're actually going to try and lob a goblin. <laughs> no ball. The elves are in possession here. Look, little guy in the middle, look how Suave is in there with that ball. We're basically going to chuck one of these guys at him and see where he goes. So our troll is going to activate, needing a two plus. He's going for it. He's going to move slightly closer so that you can effectively try and get the uh, pass in that short throw area. So just in here somewhere. It's actually going to try and throw the goblin to this square here. So that would need a five plus because it's quite close. So this guy's gonna be lobbed. We're gonna roll the dice. We rolled a two. Now, because there's no modifiers on this, that's actually a su sort of successful throw rather than superb throw, but we're not too bothered about that because we're trying to knock players over here. So our guy would now be Skyward with the aim of hopefully knocking this guy over. We'll roll it and see what happens and then I'll detail a little how it could work if it doesn't come off. So our little goblin's gone to the five. He's remember he's not landed yet. Oh, he's gone to the five again. And oh, he's gone to the two, which is there. He's actually been thrown to there anyway. Let's assume that our uh, little goblin was thrown directly. He scattered around a little bit, but he's landing directly on this catcher here. So in that situation, you don't get a chance to land. You effectively knock this player down straight away onto the ground where you would then get a chance to break their armor, which we'll detail soon, which unfortunately in this case, we roll a double one for, but then you would scatter the little guy one more time and he would land here. He doesn't get a chance to land either, a little bit like a player that's thrown with no tackle zones, he'd actually be injured. But potentially, if we roll a five then, there's a five, he could have scattered onto this guy and the whole process starts again. So we'd actually knock the ball carrier over. Um, roll on his armor too, and we'll do it. In this situation, he's okay. We would then bounce again. Lost the D8 to the seven, which would take out another player. We love that. We roll on his armor. Actually, it's through. Let's roll it. We love to see it. Anyway, and then we would bounce one more time because that's where the player was. We would bounce to the one, which is there where we would then have our armor rolled on. 
by the uh, very unhappy elf coach to the six, which isn't through his armour, and then the ball would bounce, I think, at this stage, which is to the five where an elf could potentially catch it. So you can see how much damage a single stunty player could do if the dice work in your favour. I mean, there's so much that needs to happen. The troll needs to wake up. The troll needs to not roll a few other dice, which we'll detail soon. The scatter needs to be perfect. Then the scatters around need to then be perfect, which in that case, funnily on camera, it was. But you could also end up completely missing and throwing your goblin off the pitch. So the risk and reward is quite great. Of course, remembering that when your players get injured and they die, you do lose them. But uh, that's using your players as projectiles. Now, you, as you saw, you also get to roll armor rolls for all of those. So you could have potentially removed three elves there, which is pretty awesome. So I hope you've enjoyed throwing the teammates. Uh, it's the, probably one of the silliest parts of the game that happen a lot. You probably see more throw teammates than you actually see passing, to be perfectly honest, in reality. I think that will be the case a lot more now. Um, there's only a few select teams that can do it so don't assume that every team in the game has that capability it's not true um, there are more now than there have ever been but there's still probably six or seven teams now uh, that can do it so not all of them so yeah I hope you enjoyed um, join us next episode where we get into the real meat and potatoes of the game blocking <laughs>